just got this burst of energy, you have this overwhelming desire to spring clean your home. And many people find that spring cleaning uh, actually is soothing to them, that it brings a feeling of peace and harmony and calm. And so today, as we work on spring cleaning our body, which will be doing poses that help detox, re rejuvenate us, and, um, and work on boosting our immune system for those spring allergies, we also want to go within and find that peace and harmony and calmness that comes from spring cleaning. So to do this spring cleaning, um, we'll be doing poses that work with our body's natural detoxification system with the major organs of detoxification. So the liver, which sits on the right side of the, of the belly, weighs about three pounds and um, removes toxins or harmful substances that we ingest, whether it's from food or drink or medications. Our kidneys, which sit on either side of the spine, fist-sized, bean-shaped organs that keep our water and fluids level and help remove excess sodium and other toxins from our system. Our colon or large intestines, which moves excess materials out of our body through solid waste, a critical part of our digestion. And digestion, keeping a healthy digestion is so important to our overall health. A lot of us hold on to things in our gut, whether it's holiday indulgences. Right now, for me, it would be stress eating. And other um, stress, stress and anxiety, whatever you may be feeling, we hold on that to that in our gut. You might be surprised to find that the skin and the lungs are on the list. The skin through sweating and the lungs through breathing. And the lungs actually remove a lot of toxins from our body through removing um, the carbon dioxide from our cells and our lymphatic system, which uses a clear watery substance that's called lymph, moves it through our system, picking up viruses, bacteria, and other toxins, moving them into the lymph nodes where white blood cells wait to hopefully kill them off. And the lymph nodes are an important part of our immune system. The immune system is a vast array of cells and organs and tissues, and it includes the thymus gland, which sits right below the V in your neck, and we'll be working with the thymus gland today as well. We're also going to be working with two meridians or energy channels. In traditional Chinese medicine, the energy channels that are most active right now are the liver and the gallbladder. So the liver runs up the side of the inside of the leg, all up to the body, and the gallbladder runs on the other side, all from the little, little toe up the side of this body and side of our, um, outside of our body. And so these two meridians support our natural detoxification <clears throat> um, system. And they can also affect us emotionally. So it's a good time to check in with those channels and make sure the energy is balanced or else you might feel a little bit out of sorts during this time of the year. So we're gonna start out today with some breath work, some pranayama. We're going prop free since I know you're doing this at home, but if you have a blanket, it doesn't have to be a yoga blanket, but if you have any kind of blanket or even a large towel, a beach towel works great. You want to fold it like a book and sit right on the edge of the blanket so we can get that nice spinal alignment. We want to reach down and move the flesh back and away so that we can really ground down through the hips reaching up through the crown of the head, softening the shoulders back and down, keeping the chin level. I'm going to offer you a couple mudras, or one mudra today that's actually two separate mudras. <clears throat> Great for spring. It's a, it's a mudra of acceptance, of receptivity, of letting go and going with the flow. It helps with the digestion, and it also helps with um, anxiety and stress. And so on the right hand, we would move the index finger to the thumb and the middle finger to the thumb so that the two outside fingers are straight, just placing them on the knee. And on the left hand, we would move the middle finger and the ring finger to the thumb, and so the other two fingers out straight. Your option to use these, placing these on your lap. And then we'll close the eyes and soften the shoulders, soften the face, and just begin to bring awareness to the just noticing every inhale and every exhale. We 
Move into a little bit deeper breath pattern. Breathing first into the belly, up into the ribs, and into the chest. And then exhaling chest, ribs, and belly. Inhale, the belly rises. The ribs expand, and the chest lifts. And then exhaling chest, ribs, and belly. Just continuing in this nice, deeper breath pattern at your own rhythm. And as you inhale deeply, think about something that you want to bring back into your life, renewal. And as you exhale, think about something you want to release and let go of that no longer serves you. So we're inhaling, renewal, we're exhaling, and releasing. And bringing the hands to heart center. We'll open with an om. I'll follow that with an invocation and an opportunity for you to set your intention for your practice. Inhaling deeply, exhaling fully, and then inhaling to begin. translated as may all beings everywhere be happy and free and may the thoughts words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that freedom and happiness for all and now i invite you to set that intention for your practice this can be anything you want to work on maybe you set your intention to release something or to open yourself up to something new or maybe you dedicate your practice to someone or something else, taking that positive energy that you create on your mat out into the world. And once you set your intention, you can slowly open your eyes. We're going to remain right here in the seated position today, beginning to warm up the body. Well, by inhaling the arms up, reaching way up, and then exhaling, keeping the arms engaged back down. Inhale up, interlace the fingers, flip the palms, reach way up, maybe open up the neck, and then exhale back down. Inhaling up, interlacing the fingers, flipping the palms, and bringing the arms behind the head, bending the right elbow down, left elbow up towards the ceiling, Opening up that side of the body, underneath the armpit in particular, where we tend to get a lot of tension, a lot of stiffness, maybe pushing the head against the arm, breathing into it. And then dipping the right elbow over to the right side, getting a little side body stretch, saying good morning to our gallbladder and meridian. And then inhaling up. Inhale the arms up. And exhale, bringing the left elbow down, right elbow up towards the ceiling. Notice if one side feels a little different than the other. That's very normal to have one side a little stiffer than the other. And then dipping that left elbow down, breathing into it. And then inhaling up and exhaling the arms back down. Inhale the arms up. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms, and this time round down. Rounding like a cat. Opening up the back of the shoulders. Making space for the heart and lungs. And then inhaling back up. And then exhaling down. Bringing the fingers behind you. You don't have to bring the palms together. You can just interlace the fingers, the elbows are out to the side, and then we're bringing the elbows towards each other. And then just gradually straightening the arms to the extent that it feels comfortable. Maybe looking up with the neck, opening the shoulders up, making that space for the lungs, 
stimulating the thymus gland. This is so good for posture too. We are always rounded over. This is a good thing to do several times a day to open up the shoulders. Taking a big deep breath and exhaling it out. And releasing the hands. Keeping the left fingertips on the left side of the leg. Inhale the right arm up and then over to the left side. Pinky down, spinning that chest and belly open. You don't want to be down like this. You want to expand, making all that space, reaching through, but keeping the right hip grounded down, maybe looking up at the hand if the neck is comfortable with that, starting to set, push that reset button in our body with the spring. Notice that we're making a lot of space on one side while compressing the organs on the other. Taking a big deep breath in, and exhale, lower the hand down. Inhale the left arm up, reach up, lean over to the right side. Again, spinning that chest and belly open, maybe looking up at the ceiling, keeping the left hip grounded down. And really stimulating that gallbladder meridian that runs all along the outside of the body. Breathing in. Inhaling up and exhaling the left hand down. Taking the right fingertips over to the left knee. Left fingertips come out to the side and slightly behind us. Pointing to a nice gentle spinal twist. Inhaling up through the crown of the head. Exhaling, twisting and looking behind us. Keeping the shoulders away from the ear. With every inhale, we want to get length. Every exhale, twist a little more. Inhaling, length, exhaling, twisting, getting in that squeeze and soak that BKS Iyengar talks about. Cutting off temporarily the blood flow to the internal organs, and when we release, fresh oxygenated blood will rush air. Inhaling through the crown, and exhale, look forward and release. Bringing the left fingertips over to the right knee, right fingertips slightly behind. Again, inhaling through the crown of the head. Exhale, twist and look behind. With every inhale, get length. Every exhale, twist a little more. Twists are wonderful for the liver meridian. The liver meridian is often called the general of the army or the second heart because it's so important to the energy system. It, it regulates blood volume and energy. Inhale, look forward, exhaling and releasing. Bringing the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana, <clears throat> down angle pose. Placing the hands on the ankles, maybe reaching down and moving that flesh back and away so we can really ground down, opening all the hip area up. Really reaching up through the crown of the head, making that space in the spine, Really invigorating those meridians, the outside of the legs and the inside of the legs. And emotionally, the liver meridian is the energy of foresight, vision, and planning. And the gallbladder meridian is the energy that puts those plans into place. It's the actions, helping us make decisions about the options we have. Inhale through the crown of the head. Bring the fingertips out in front for a gentle stretch forward, fourfold, only to a point of gentle tension. Inhaling, exhaling, and repeating the, this positive affirmation to yourself. In this season of new beginnings, I am energized with new ideas. I am inspired. I create my own destiny. And then bringing the fingertips back in, inhaling up, we'll bring the knees in, cross with the ankles, we're coming on to hands and knees. If you have a blanket and you want to use it under your knees, you can. If this thing on your knees bothers you, cat cow is a great pose to be done in a chair or sitting. So once we're in our tabletop position, 
We want the wrist to be under the shoulders, fingers spread wide, really pushing down on the palm. We want the knees under the hips. And then we're going to inhale and drop the belly down, looking up for that cow belly. And then exhaling into that scared cat. Inhaling cow belly. And then exhaling into cat. Continuing these at the rhythm of your own breath and noticing that as you inhale and exhale, you're creating space in one area of the body and you're compressing the organs in the other side, nourishing the kidneys that sit on either side of the spine. Really stimulating the digestive system in large intestines, colon. Coming back to a neutral spine, we're going to look over at the right side, stretching out the left side of the body. Looking back to center, looking over the left side, stretching out the right side of the body. And then coming back to center. And then moving in to Tiger Pose. So we lift the left leg, flexing the foot, bending the knee, arching up, looking up. And if you want to add on, you can reach out the right hand and then reach behind, find that left foot, grab the foot, and inhale up a bigger, a bigger back bend. This is a wonderful pose. It's a back bend and a twist. So we're getting that detoxing action. We're getting the twist. We're getting balancing. Inhale. And then exhale, placing the hand and the knee back on the mat. Inhale, the right foot up, looking up. This is tiger pose. And then maybe adding on, reaching out the left hand, reaching behind us, grabbing the right foot into bound tiger pose. So we're learning balance on the mat so we can carry it off the mat. We're stimulating all those organs, opening up the chest at the same time. This is a strong pose, a pose of power, personal power, strength, determination. And then exhale, release, bringing the hand and the knee back to the mat. Coming back to that neutral spine, we'll move into thread the needle, inhaling the right arm way up, and then exhale, slide it through, placing the cheek and the shoulder on the mat. And this is a wonderful pose because it's both an inversion and a twist. And if you want to make it into a chest opener too, you can lift that left arm up and bring it behind the back. And you'll see that you get a little more openness in the chest. So we've talked about the power of twists for detoxing. Inversions are wonderful for moving that lymph through our system. That clear watery substance picking up all of the toxins. Taking a few breaths here. And then moving the top arm back to the mat and using the hand to push yourself back up. Inhaling the right arm way up and then exhaling, placing it back on the mat. Coming back to that neutral spine and P on the left side. Inhaling the left arm up and then exhaling, sliding it through, placing that cheek and the shoulder on the mat. Again, option to add on, bringing the right hand around and behind. Breathing in. This is a wonderful calming pose as well. A pose you can use for self-care. Like turning soil over during the spring to find fresh soil. That's what we're doing in this practice. Detoxing, rejuvenating, Let's repeat another affirmation 
I release that which is no longer serving me to make room for new things. I accept what is, I let go of what was, I have faith in what will be. And then bringing the top arm back to the mat, use it to push yourself back up, inhaling that left arm back up, and bringing it back to the mat. We're going to go into a deeper inversion, bringing the forearms to the mat, grab opposite elbows, and then bring the hands out in front of you, interlacing the fingers. You should have a nice little triangle there. Bringing the forehead towards the mat, tucking the toes, and then lifting up into the dolphin pose. This is a big inversion. It's the next best thing to a headstand. And here we're really getting that lift to move through this system. The lymphatic system, unlike the circulatory system, which has the heart to pump blood through it, the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. And so it relies upon our breath, upon muscle contraction and movement and gravity. So these inversions really help move that lymph into areas that it may not otherwise have a hard time getting to. When we come back up, it's going to flow into all those six or seven hundred lymph nodes that we have in the body. Bringing the knees back to the mat and coming back up onto hands and knees. We're going to move into some back bends. And back bends are great because they open the chest, they stimulate the lungs, they open up space for the lung, and they stimulate the lymph nodes. I'm going to move my blanket off my mat because we're coming onto our stomachs. These are great for the thymus gland, too. So, the first one a gentle back bend, space pose. The feet are no more than hip width apart. The arms, the shoulders are over the elbows. Fingers are spread wide, arms are parallel. The shoulders come back and down. And then we inhale and lift up, maybe pulling the back towards us, getting a broader, spreading the collarbones, the bones even broader, breathing into it. Stimulating the lymph nodes, there are many of them are in the throat and under the arm. And even in the groin area, we're pushing our hips into the mat. And then exhaling back down. And then bringing the fingertips in line with the shoulders. Again, the shoulders come back and down. And we inhale up into a little baby curl. Again, feeling all that broadening in the chest and the collarbone. Taking a deep breath here. And then exhaling back down. We're going to go into a bit, little bit different version of Cobra. So we're placing the hands on either side of the top of the mat. The shoulders still come back and down. And then we inhale up. Leaving the left hand on the mat, we reach the right hand behind us into a Cobra twist. Getting a little detox in there. And then exhaling, we come back down. Place the right hand back down. Inhale, we lift back up. And the left hand comes back behind us. Cobra twist. And then exhaling back down. And then bringing the hands to the top of the mat. We'll bring the feet, the ankles towards each other. The toes come out to the side of the mat. And placing the forehead on the mat into crocodile pose. Bringing your awareness to your breath. With our arms overhead and our stomachs pushing into the mat, it's encouraging diaphragmatic breathing. And diaphragmatic breathing, the diaphragm is the key muscle for breath. That makes it a very calming pose, a very rejuvenating pose. And this is a great pose for self-care. If you can Find 10 minutes a day to come into this pose. You'll find it really helpful to find that peace and harmony, calmness. Twice a day for 10 minutes is even better. So particularly during this very stressful time, if you need some self-care, this is such a simple pose and so, so good for us.
And then we'll push ourselves back up into kneeling. And we're going into extended child's pose, so the toes come together, the knees apart, sitting back on the heels, extending the arms out, and if possible, bringing the forehead to the mat. Now, if you have difficulty with that and have a block, a book would work too. You can place your forehead on a block or a book. Taking a few minute, minutes to check in. How are you feeling today? What is your body feeling like? That's the most beautiful thing about yoga is taking that time for yourself and looking to see, feeling, you're actually feeling your body. If you feel a little stiffness anywhere still, breathe into that, send that healing breath there. So if we followed nature's lead during the winter and we took time to relax, rejuvenate, find maybe silence or meditation, or just anything that we enjoy to recharge our batteries. We'll go into the spring with that gallbladder and liver meridian balance, and you'll have the courage and the strength to take those actions, to make those plans. But if you come into the spring without having done that and your battery is on low, you might feel that spring energy to be irritating. Frustrated, you might feel even find yourself reacting with anger. And if you find yourself doing that and you don't know why it is, that's a sign that you need to slow down and do something for yourself. It can be, it doesn't have to be a spa day, although that's very nice, but it can be 10 minutes in crocodile pose that we just did. And then pushing back up to tabletop. We're going to tuck the toes, lift the hips, and move into our first downward facing dog. Making sure the fingers are facing the front of the mat, the elbow creases are facing to the front. Bring some movement to your dog, bending one knee and then the other. We're in a big inversion again, downward dog, our heart is above our head. And so we're really moving that length through our system into our respiratory tract. And that's why these inversions are so good for spring allergies. And then maybe coming up on the toes, stretching the feet out before placing them down towards the mat again. And then looking between the hands. Walk to the front of the mat, hanging down at Uttanasana, four fold, bringing the hands to the shins, inhale up into a flat back, and then exhale, forward fold, and then inhale all the way up, and the hands come to heart center. Taking a breath here, and moving into mountain pose. The feet are close together. All four corners of the feet are pressed firmly into the mat. This is a very active pose. You're not just standing there, so the kneecaps are lifted. The thighs inwardly rotate. The shoulders come back and down, the palms face forward, the chin is parallel to the floor. And maybe close the eyes. And take a moment to go up on top of your mountain stand in receptivity and groundedness and look out at all the possibilities that are out there for you. And taking a moment to feel gratitude for all the wonderful things that are yet to come your way. And then releasing Tadasana Mountain Pose. We're going into a balancing twist. So this is a little tricky. So walls are great, they're props too, so if you need to be near a wall, you can go over to a wall. The key, or you can keep the toes on the mat and just the knee out to the side. The key really is to go into this slowly. So we're lifting the right knee up. We're bringing the left hand to the right knee. We're twisting over to the right. We're reaching the right hand out if possible. Balancing twist. 
bringing calmness to the mind and detoxing to the body. And then bringing the right hand back, release the knee, the knee comes back down. Now don't be surprised if one side you can do it and the other side you can't. It happens to me all the time. I really prayed I would not fall over in this today. But we're going to do the left side now. So the left knee comes up. The right hand goes to the knee. We look over to the left side. We extend the left arm out. Balancing and detoxing. And then bringing the left hand back in. Release the knee. The knee comes back down. Moving into a series of standing poses that will generate heat and movement for that lymphatic system, as well as stimulate those um, legs, the you know, meridians in the legs. We're going to take a big step back with the left foot. You can stay. We're going into crescent warrior, but if you're more comfortable in regular warrior, you can stay in regular warrior. Otherwise, we're bending the front knee. We're coming up on the back toes. Torso is facing the front. We're inhaling the arms up. A little back knee. Bringing the arms back to cactus. Opening that chest. Inhaling the arms back up. And slowly, slowly, slowly turning to the right side into that crescent twist. Inhaling back up. Bringing the back foot back to the 45 degree angle, turning the torso to the side, keeping the front knee bent. We're in bringing the arms parallel, check your stance, reaching out through the fingertips. Warrior two, making this a moving warrior. Inhaling the arms up, straightening the leg, and exhaling, warrior two. Inhaling up, and exhaling, warrior two. Inhaling up, and exhaling, warrior two. Staying here, we'll straighten that front leg. Now, if you have a block, I always recommend the use of a block. We're going into triangle pose. Reaching way out of the hand to get length. Bringing the hand to a block, or if you don't have a block, to the leg. And inhaling the left arm up. Now, what we want is openness in this pose. We want to spin the chest and belly open. So we don't want to be down to the floor and doing like this. We want to come wherever we need to, to open up the chest, maybe looking up at the right hand, at the left hand. We're really compressing some of those organs, stimulating them. And then inhale up through the hand, bend that front knee again, Going out to warrior two. Slide that left hand down, inhale the right arm up and over into peaceful warrior. Inhaling back. Straighten the front leg. Bring the hands to the hips. All ten toes come to the side of the mat. Inhale a little back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Fingertips are in the middle of the mat. And then we're inhaling up to get that flat back. And we're exhaling forward fold. And maybe if you're comfortable bringing the hands to the ankles and just hanging down. This is a really peaceful pose too. And you're really stimulating that lymphatic system and bringing fresh blood to the brain so that you'll feel really energized after this. And then we'll bring the right hand to the middle of the mat and inhale the left arm up in a nice detoxing twist. Inhaling and exhaling and bringing the left hand back down and inhaling the right arm up. Reaching through the fingertips. Feeling that nice stretch on the back of the legs. And then bringing the left hand back down. Bring the hands to the hips and slow, 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 roll up one vertebra at a time. We're turning the right toes to the front of the mat. The left toes come in at a 45 degree angle. We're bending the knee, placing the wrist on 
the thigh, and inhaling the left arm up and over into extended side. Really good for our gallbladder meridian. Feel that energy all the way from the bottom of the feet up through the tips of the fingers. Taking a big deep breath in, and next one. And then bring the top arm down, turn the torso to face the knee. Bring the hands on either side of the foot, tuck those back toes, and we're stepping into a plank. Now you can modify and bring the knees down, or you can stay up in a full plank, generating heat, burning up any toxins in the gut area, good for digestion, and then pushing up into downward facing dog. Taking a couple breaths here. Breathing. And then looking to the front of the mat. Step to the front of the mat. Bringing the hands to the shins. Inhale up, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. And maybe add them on by grabbing the opposite elbows and hanging down. Maybe shaking the head yes, shaking the head no. Just releasing any more any tension that you might feel in that spine. Let that stress just roll right off your back. So good for circulation. Includes improves the blood flow to the digestive organs. And then releasing the hands and inhaling all the way up. The hands go to the heart center. I'm not going to repeat that tricky, <laughs> that tricky uh, pose that we did to start. We're just going to go right into the second side by taking a big step back with the right foot. Again, you can stay in warrior one, or you can come up on the toes, bending the front knee into that crescent form. Inhaling the arms up, reaching up, maybe a little back bend, opening up into cactus arm. is a balancing pose. <laughs> Inhaling the arms up. And slow, 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 turning to the left side into that crescent twist. And keep that back leg really engaged because it has a tendency to want to fold down. Inhaling the arms back up. Bringing the back foot flat. Turn the torso to the right side. Keeping the knee bent and parallel the arms going into warrior two. Looking out over the fingertips and make sure, look down, make sure your heel is in line with the arch of your foot or it can be a heel to heel if that feels better to you. Look at that back hand, where is it at? We don't want it crooked, we want it straight out. And then making this a moving warrior by inhaling, lifting up, straightening the front knee and then exhaling back down. Inhaling up and exhaling down. Inhale up, exhale down, pause here, straighten that front leg, reaching the way out to get length, bringing the hand down where it's comfortable, using your block or your chin, inhaling right arm up. Stacking the shoulders, spinning the chest and belly open, breathing. So good for the lungs and the tightest leg, reaching up through the fingertips. And then inhaling up, bend that front knee again, coming into that warrior two, placing the left right hand on the back thigh, and inhaling the left arm up, side body stretch. Peaceful warrior. Inhaling back to warrior two, straighten the front leg, bring the hands to the hips, all ten toes come to the side of the mat. Inhale a little back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Fingertips on the mat, inhale up to get a flat back, and exhale forward. Maybe bringing the hands to right hand to the right ankle, left hand to the left ankle. Feeling, envisioning that limp moving into the respiratory system, clearing, cleaning everything up. And breathing. Bringing the right hand to the middle of the mat. Inhale, the left arm up. Reach through the fingertips. 
inhaling, and then exhaling back, the hand back down. Inhale the right arm up. Big twist. And then inhale and exhale, both hands down. Bring the hands to the hips and roll up, slow, 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 one vertebra at a time. Right toe, left toes come in front of the mat, bend the knee, wrist comes to the thigh. Inhale the right arm up and over, extended side. Feeling that energy all along the outside of the body. Inhaling, exhaling, bringing the top arm back down to the hip, turn the torso to face the front of the knee, hands come down to the mat, and we're stepping back into that plank or into modified plank, burning the toxins up, really helping the digestive system. And then pushing up into a downward facing dog. Coming down to the knees. And moving into gate pose. So if you need your blanket, you can get it. We're only doing one pose on the knees. So we're bringing the right leg out to the side. The knee should be in line with the arch of the foot. We're sliding that right and the foot should be flat on the floor. We're sliding that right hand down, inhaling that left arm up and over, really opening up the intercostal muscles, and the ribs, stimulating the glands, thymus gland, and the organs. We're really getting into the liver right now since it's on the right side. And inhaling up, we'll bring that knee back in line with the other knee and bring the left foot out to the side again the knee is in line with the arch of the foot sliding the left hand back down inhale the right arm up and over really spinning that chest and belly open and remembering to breathe maybe looking up at the hand if that's comfortable feeling that Energy all along the side of the body. Inhaling back up. Bringing that knee in and coming to seat. We're moving into a seated forward fold, Hashimotanasana. So the legs are extended in front of us, feet are flexed, thighs are lifted. This is almost like mountain pose, the legs, but seated. And then we're inhaling the arms up. We're gonna get a lot of length. And like someone's pulling you from your chest with a string, we're gonna keep that length and exhale forward fold. We don't have our straps today. So just wherever feels comfortable, once you feel that tension, place the hands and fold forward. Compressing and stimulating the internal organs increasing circulation, improving our digestion and our metabolism. And four folds are very calming. So breathe into it, fill your body with deep breaths, finding that calmness, that peace, and the harmony. And then inhaling, slide the hands back up. We're going to go into a really deep twist. <clears throat> so you have a lot of options on this. You can slide the right foot up and leave it there. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can bring the foot over the knee as long as the foot is flat. And it really depends on how your knee feels, whether you want to stay on this side or the other side. You can also slide that left foot up to near the hip so that you're in kind of a crescent. But you want to make sure that the feet, the foot, stays really flat. Now, the other option with the hands is you can place your hands on the outside of the knee and just gently twist 
to the right, or you can inhale the left arm up and bring it around, making it a really deep twist, and turn and look to the right side. Inhaling up, and exhale and twist a little more. This is a really powerful twist that helps with digestive issues. It's one of the oldest known poses in yoga, Ardha Masyandrasana. And it's moving the prana, or intake energy, that's above our navel, down, and the upon, which is below the navel, up. And they meet in the middle and remove toxins out of the body. Inhaling up, you get length, exhale, twist. Inhale up, exhale, look forward and release. So we'll take the right foot out, take, slide the left foot back down, straighten out the feet. We'll slide the left foot up, again, keeping it here or over the other side. Option two, slide that right foot up near the glute muscles into that little pretzel twist. Again, you can just twist gently like this, or you can inhale the right arm up and around. Left hand is behind you. Really twisting, inhaling up, twisting and looking behind. Inhale up, exhale, twist. Moving those energies towards each other. They normally move away from each other. So we're moving that prana and the prana neck towards each other. Inhale, look forward, exhale, release. Bringing the left foot out, right foot out, sliding them back, both back down. Going into another forward fold, Janu Shishasana. Head to knee pose. So we're sliding the right foot up. We're letting the knee fall out to the right side. Sole of the foot inside the thigh, keeping that left foot really flexed. Now, John and Chef Shots on our seated forward fold, or head to knee pose, is both a twist and a forward fold. So we're moving our navel towards our kneecap as we move over. So we're inhaling the arms up, we're twisting towards the kneecap, and exhale, forward fold, keeping that length as we go down. Inhale, and exhale. Such a calming pose if you breathe into it. And as you move into this spring season, take advantage of the opportunities that come your way. And even during this stressful time, we can bloom. We'll repeat the affirmation, I will bloom where I am planted. And then inhaling back up. Bringing the left fingertips to the inside, we'll do a little reverse twist here, right hand behind, inhale through the crown of the head, exhale, twist, look right. Deep breaths. Inhale, look forward, exhale, release. Bringing that knee up, sliding it back down. Bringing the left foot in, let it, the knee fall out to the side. Sole of the foot through the inside of the knee. Might want to reach down and pull the flesh back in the way to get really grounded. Remember that leg is really active, the foot is really flexed, and we're twisting towards the kneecap when we, when we forward fold. So inhale the arms up, get that leg like someone's pulling you by a cord. Keep the leg twist to the right, and exhale, fold down. Inhaling and exhaling. Using this pose to find Calms. Using this pose in the breath, breathing deeply. There's no Zen saying, sitting quietly, doing nothing. Spring comes when the grass goes by itself. Inhaling back up. Bringing the knee back in. Now you can stay here. We're going into a seated four fold, a wide leg four fold. 
You can turn to your mat if you like your feet on the mat versus just on the floor. Yogi's choice. So we're opening the legs wide. And we're just going to fold forward to a point of gentle tension. You don't have to go all the way to the floor. So we're just walking the hands out. And breathing, exhaling down, folding down to wherever's comfortable for you. Keeping the feet gently flexed. Really stretching out those legs for those meridians. Breathing. slowly walking the fingertips back up. Keeping the left leg there, we'll bring the right foot in so that the foot is near the groin. We're keeping the left foot flexed and we're sliding that left hand down towards the toes. You don't have to reach the toes, but as close to the toes as you can reach. And then inhale the right arm up and over, getting that huge side body stretch. Remembering that we're opening, we're not going down like this. We want to open as much as we can. Feeling that big stretch. And then inhaling back up. And then we'll bring the right foot back out. And the left foot comes into the groin. Flexing that right foot. Sliding our fingers down to reach the toes or as close as possible. Inhaling the left arm up and over. We're reaching through the fingertips, feeling that big opening in the side body. And we're really compressing our internal organs as well. And breathing. And then inhaling back up. Exhaling release. So we're gonna bring the legs back into Sukhasana. Or seated pose because we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to do what's called a thymus thumb or thymus cap. <clears throat> this is something you can do several times a day that is going that is really helps the immune system. It really it helps release white blood cells. It's very calming. It's, it, it brings uh, rebalances your life energy. Um, it's really good for stress. So we're simply taking the thumb and the little finger, keeping the, these three fingers out. And right below the V in your chest is where the thymus is. So we're sliding that down, and we're just going to begin to tap it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And let's close the eyes. And as we tap, let's repeat to ourselves, all is well. All is well. All is well. All is well. We stop and place our hand over our heart. We take a moment to think of something that we feel particularly grateful for. And we'll release the hand, bring the knees together, and we're going to roll down onto the mat and come into our favorite pose. Shavasana, but we're not in Shavasana. We're only going to stay there for a couple of breaths. So we're rolling down the feet, flop open, the palms face up. And just take a moment to bring your awareness to your breath and feel the practice and the thymus tapping integrate on a cellular level. Breathing. And 
to see if you feel some sense of peace, some stress relief. We'll bring the feet flat on the mat, as close to the glutes as possible. Palms are flat on the mat, reaching towards the feet. The knees are moving in. We're moving into a bridge pose, just a gentle bridge pose. Inhaling the hips, raising the hips up, keeping those knees moving towards each other. Noticing that you are in an inversion because your heart is above your head. And you're pushing down on both the thyroid and the thymus gland. So you're helping that lymphatic system, you're bringing fresh blood to your brain. It's a nice little back bend as well. And then exhale, slowly move down to the mat. Bringing the knees into the chest. Reach the arms out to a T. We're moving into our last twist of the practice. So we're inhaling and then exhaling, letting the knees float over to the right side, looking over the left side. And taking a moment to let go of any last thing we need to let go of, any negative emotion, stress, release that tension out of the spine. Maybe looking out over the left hand. And then using the strength of the core, we'll inhale the knees back up. Bring them flat on the mat. Readjust your spine to neutral. Take a breath. And then inhale the knees into the chest and let them float over to the left side. Looking out over the right hand if that's comfortable. And releasing any tension in the spine. Notice the if your body feels rejuvenated. Inhaling the knees back to the center, bring the feet back to the mat, nice and flat on the mat. And you can go into any pose, one last pose before we go into Shavasana. Maybe it's happy baby, bringing the heels to the ceiling, on the hands around, or any pose you feel that your body needs today. Ready, moving into that Shavasana. We will be coming up from Shavasana for a guided meditation and some additional breath work, so don't just turn the video off. So we want the feet to flop open to the side of the mat, the palms to come up. Moving into conscious relaxation. Letting yourself sink into stillness. Relaxing your whole body. Allowing your whole body to sink into the mat. Lay down the weight you so patiently bear upon your shoulders. As you feel the whole body relax, feel the earth receive you and the infinite expanse of the sky grow even wider 
as your awareness reaches up to meet it. Allow a wave of breath to move through your body and bring you into deeper relaxation. Repeating to yourself, my body is relaxed and my mind and heart are at peace. Beginning to bring awareness back into the room. Maybe wiggling the fingers or the toes. Just 
stretching out on a nice morning stretch. Stretching the right side a little more than the left. The left side a little more than the right. Taking your time when you're ready, rolling over to your right side, pausing, cherishing these moments that we have on our mat. Ready, moving up to a seated position, keeping the eyes closed. Inviting your body to stay soft. Turning the palms up, placing them on the knees. A gesture of receptivity and openness. Opening to all this new season. Bringing your awareness to your breath, letting it be natural and without effort. Spring is a time of renewal. Time of rebirth. Just imagine yourself now being a flower, ready to sprout from the flower bowl. You've been hibernating all winter in a warm, cozy shelter, snuggled in the earth. Earth has protected you through the cold, wintry months. Now, as spring approaches, the rains fall from the heavens, and you soak up the water completely. It renews you and gently wakes you up. Notice how you look forward to feeling the beautiful warmth of the sun once again. Now you break through the bulb and start to grow into the beautiful, bright flower that you are. And as your flower soaks up the warm light, Continue to breathe with a smooth, steady, even breath. And begin to consider what you are welcoming in as you enter this new phase of energy and existence. Time of light and life. What is the intention you are setting for yourself at this time of budding energy? Try to capture your spring intention in a single word, like joy or peace. And on each inhale, internally and silently, say to yourself, I am joyful, or I am peaceful, or whatever your intention is. On each exhale, allow your intention to radiate through your body, mind, and spirit. Remember to repeat this intention throughout your day, taking your practice off your mat and into your life. Complete our practice with a little more breath work. Particularly important in this time of stress and uncertainty. This is called pursed lip breathing. 
So we'll inhale through the nose, gently as though you're smelling a beautiful flower. And then exhale, purse your lips as though you're blowing on a cup of hot tea. Inhaling the fragrance of your flower. And exhale, purse your lips and blow on your cup of tea. Rhythm of your own breath, inhaling and blowing. Relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your jaw. In your eyelids. And with every exhalation, notice that your body is feeling calm. Bringing the hands to heart center. Close our practice with an arm. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling fully. And inhale to begin. With each spring comes new life, energy, and green growth. In summer comes the sun, warm, kind, and enduring. Fall brings its canvas of color and careful, gentle change. Winter brews into faithful strength, beauty, and pure white. And then comes you. You are all that nature offers. A blessing. A gift. You are the fifth season. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I appreciate my two beautiful assistants helping me today. And I particularly appreciate Michelle, who's the light in all of our life, for making this possible. Namaste. Debbie's always making you cry. I make myself cry. <laughs> finish. Sorry, guys, I make you sick every time I finish. Oh, I do all these little twists and turns. Oh, that was a beautiful cry. That was Thank so you. sweet. I, yeah, I love the crying, doing it. Before I can share it. No, I was trying to remember not to rub my eyes. I did this. Practice. That too. was awesome, Debbie. It was. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm like swaying up. Oh my gosh. And thank you guys for coming. It was helpful having someone here <laughs> instead of a blank room. Like, oh, Michelle, I think I can do it by myself. I've done training videos before where I had no audience, and I just have to imagine <laughs> people are there. And I thought, well, I can imagine my class, you know. But so I was happy that you guys were willing to come. That little Kaleo, Haley's little boy, he is the cutest little thing, isn't he? Who, who's boy? She, she, I don't know if you know her. She was in a, one of the oh. classes after me. He is so cute, but he's big for her. He was born in October. She came like three days before she delivered to my class. <laughs> oh, she was in the teacher training and she was pregnant? She did get pregnant while she was in teacher training, but she had the baby after. Okay, I remember you talking about that. 
and he is just, he's got a head full of hair, and he's just really alert. He's so Aww. cute. How old is he now? Well, what is that? I think he's in the game of very much. Well, five months old, I think. still on there and I'll be able to share. I'm still learning on that. But. Okay, if y'all want to do any, um, a little bit longer, just to work on one or two poses for our teacher training program that I'm having to do online, I'm going to do 